Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm Craig. Awesome. Uh, so today we're going to talk about um, worry and anxiety. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. I've ne- I don't worry about anything. No. Yeah. Well, so so you you asked me a question. You said why do we worry? Mm. Like why do we worry? Why are we anxious? I have some good questions. You do. You uh, always have. Don't have many good answers, but got lots of good questions. So sometimes your questions really make me get me anxious. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like, oh no, Craig's going to ask me some questions about yeah. this. <laughs> no, so wh- why do we worry? Mm. Wh- why are we anxious? Like right now um, in America. Um, there are more people on um, anxiety medicine yep. um, than ever before. Yep. Like this is the most anxious time mm-hmm. um, in um, at least modern recorded history. Um, if we were measuring pharmaceutical prescriptions, <laughs> yep. it's hard to say this is the most anxious time in history because, like, there's been like some world wars and sure. things like that, famines sure. and things like that. And and not to say that there isn't war and famine going on right now, um, but right now is the the most anxious time. It seems the point. The in point our is modern there's culture. always something to be anxious about. There's always something to worry about. There is. Yes. There is. So, and, so and, the, yeah. but why? Why? Yeah. Why do we do that? And there's lots of um, things that I've heard discussed or, or that I can think about, um, in terms of like, man, well, like, why do, why do I get anxious about, um, silly things? Right. You know, like some, sometimes I look at not just out in culture or not just like, you know, the, the random person that you may know or run into who seems anxious about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but even just silly things that I can get anxious about. It's like, like, why am I, why am I doing that? And then, and then along comes Jesus in the gospels in, in the sermon on the Mount and says, he says, that's why I tell you not to worry. Yeah. Don't go, uh, come on, Jesus. Don't worry about anything, anything. And you're like, seriously, dude, anything, (laughs) don't worry about anything. All right. I'm, there might be some things I should worry about. Right. Like, and, and, and I feel like that that's a, uh, normal thing. So, so if you're listening to this and you're like, well, yeah, there's things that I worry about or yeah, yeah I find myself being anxious about some things. Um, I, th- I think that that's um, certainly normal, like for right now. Like I, I don't want to demonize or, or belittle anyone um, who... <laughs> Uh, is anxious or worried because I would have to do that in a mirror. Yes. Like, the, like, yeah, like because I, I feel um, a lot of times like my, that, like um, that I'm carrying um, anxiety yeah. or, or worry um, because of my personality. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about being an extrovert mm-hmm. because of my personality and um, trying to be friendly. There's a lot of people who um, probably just assume like, well, Brian's just, an upbeat kind of guy. Right, like right. I've, I've heard people tell me like, how do you stay so positive? Right. And it's like, well, um, you, you should, you should hang out with me more often. often yeah. <laughs> you should hang out with me when no one else is around. Right. Um, right. because like, man, I, uh, really, really have struggled with, um, anxiety, anxiety. And, and, and panic attacks. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and that's something that I remember the first time I was having a panic attack. I was like, what am I, what is going on Funny, with me right yeah. now? Like, I, why can't I catch my breath? Like, why, why, why can't I stop my brain from um, just immediately going towards, um, like, despair and hopelessness? Like, right. like wh- why, why is that happening? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think it's, a, I think it's a, something that everybody is familiar with. Right. Um, and so you, so you, you talk about anxiety. I think for, for me it's, it's worry. I, I'm, I, I'm, my default position is to go to worry or worry about everything. Mm. Um, and, and not all the time. And so the point here is, if again, if you're li- listening and you're a warrior or you're feeling anxious, um, this is not about demonizing you. Yeah. This, this is saying we're, we all have it, and this side of death, we're always going to have it. But maybe we can talk about some things that, that talk about how we reduce worry yeah. and anxiety. And since I'm the world's king of worrying and maybe you're a, you've got a bit of anxiety... <laughs> going on we can i think we could help each other this. out here because like, so. there's certainly some things that i do that um to help mitigate um, my anxiety or, mm-hmm. or or my worrying um that are um unhealthy mm-hmm. 
there's certainly things that I do that are unhealthy. That's a nice way to say it, mm. um, if not outright destructive. Uh, and then there's some things that I think are pretty, you know, neutral and natural and, um, you know, helpful to do, like yep. exercise, things like that. Yep. Um, and then there's um, places where I run, um, where I go, that I, th- I think are um, holistically healing mm. for my stress and anxiety. Um, and so, and so I think those are some things that we could, we could talk about. Yep. Um, so tell me some terrible things that you do that you regret that deal with your worry. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> Yeah. It's like, how, how long have we got here? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Five hours yeah, later. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, like the SpongeBob thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. No, I mean, there's certainly some, there's certainly unhealthy things that, that you can do to try to mitigate worry and stress. And that's, I think that's why um, people turn towards like uh, abusing alcohol and drugs. Right. I remember during COVID, mm-hmm. like um, that was the thing that like liquor sales were through the roof. Yeah. I would be going on walks through my neighborhood and people would bring out their recycling and there would be just like, just like yep. handles of liquor and wine bottles. So, so here, here's to me is that the, the, for me at least the number one way to, um, to continue to to worry more and to go deeper and deeper into worry is to isolate. Yeah. Um, isolation to me is the killer. And I'm good at it because I'm an introvert and I just love being by myself. So, yeah. Um, but that's what happened in COVID, right, mm-hmm. is that people were forced to isolate. Yeah. They were forced to not be around others and that just exacerbated this worry and anxiety. Yeah, like how, how do I deal with this? I, I, I want to I wanna be numb to yeah. this feeling. I've, like, actually, I've, I've heard somewhere the, the saying that the opposite of addiction I mean, it's not sobriety it's it's um connection oh wow yeah and and this idea of you know we we get addicted to whatever it might be but the way to break the addiction is to connect yeah. with, with others yeah that's good yeah that's good yeah i think um I, I think when you have that natural draw when you're feeling worried or anxious whether it's in your finances <clears throat> or just general uncertainty um, maybe you are worried about your health or maybe there's all kinds of different things that um, you might feel worry or, or anxiety well, they're, over. They're the biggies, aren't they? Money, health, and relationships. Yeah, I mean, that, that's... It's that kind of... Those, those, are the, those are the go-to ones. Yeah. And, and, and certainly when you feel that way, I understand the feeling of um, I, I just don't want to feel the way that I'm feeling right now. Yeah. And, and so you'll, you, you, you might have a tendency, as I have, um, to just, I, I just want to not feel this way. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to, I want to be numb to this. Or maybe, maybe you just binge Netflix. Yeah, like so <laughs> whatever that is. So there's therein lies the first step. I think step number one is is acknowledging, is mm-hmm. is being aware that I'm feeling this way. Yeah. Because many times I'll feel worried, and then I go binge, mm-hmm. watch TV sit alone do nothing and just spiral yeah. into this this depth and i'm and i've not caught myself until too late yeah until much later yeah I, th- that's sometimes i don't even realize oh i am terribly anxious right that, now right but I, I i all i know is like well i don't want i don't like how i'm feeling and i want to i want to feel different yep and so you, you you might do things that are that are unhealthy. And then I think that's where the connection comes in, right? Because mm-hmm. then when you connect with somebody else, they go, "Hey, you seem a little off right now. Is everything okay?" Yeah. And yeah. and that can be that that mirror that gives you that uh, that uh, self awareness, mm-hmm. the self awareness. Oh, that, oops, um, I am kind of worried about stuff right now, and yeah. someone picked up on it. But you've got to you got to make yourself available to yeah. talk to others. I have. You're talking about connection. I ha- I have friends that will ask me the same question back to back. Uh, <laughs> uh, clever. Yeah, they'll go. Yeah. Hey, so how are you? Yeah. And oh, I'll how be like, are you really? Yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, well, you know, yeah, I'm doing blah blah blah, blah and I'll give whatever answer, and they're like, yeah, cool. So how are you? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, yeah. Um, let me. How am I? Let yeah. me. Let me think about this for a second. Yeah, actually, you know what? I think I'm frustrated and tired and probably worried out of my mind about right. X situation yep. or, or whatever it is. Um, and, and, and that's where that connection piece is, mm. is, is great. Like that's a, that's a healthy place to go for sure. Yep. Um, but, but there are like just natural things that you can, can do. That, that you can do. Like, I think it's, um, good if you are stressed or worried or anxious, um, to, uh, exercise go for a walk like uh, yeah well wa- i think that's go like work the, out. that's the number one thing that people say is yeah. like if you're feeling stressed or anxious yeah. like 
go, go for a walk. Get up, walk away. I was talking to um, uh, somebody, a friend of mine, they, they actually attend Wellspring, and they were talking about what they do um, when they're uh, when when they're stressed or or, or when they're anxious, um, and uh, it's called uh, like it's called uh, completing the cycle is uh-huh. what is what they called it. I actually sent you an article about this, yes. I think. Yeah. Um, and they're talking about uh, the the article talks about like what a gazelle does. Yes. Um, when it's uh, if a gazelle happens to escape a lion, lion or yeah. a cheetah mm-hmm. or or whatever predator is trying to eat them, um, and and if you've seen like National Geographic or any of those like Discovery Channel clips, you've got the gazelle and he finally and he narrowly gets away. Right, you yeah. know, well, what that gazelle will go do is lay down in the shade somewhere. Mm-hmm. And shake violently. Right. Like, we'll just absolutely... This is true. ...shake yeah, violently. I, I read that article. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and what it's doing is it's allowing itself to um, feel all of the, like, I almost got ate by a lion. Right. <laughs> right? Like, allowing itself to have that response um, and then uh, can, move, can move on. If a gazelle doesn't do that... Yep. It never gets out of that response. Right. It never gets out of the response of this lion is chasing me. Yeah. This this lion is hunt, is hunting me. Yeah. Uh, and worry and anxiety can be the same thing. So how would that how would that apply to us? Um, pretending like you're not anxious. Yeah. Pretending that you're not worried. Mm. Like I'll either I'll either numb myself or I'll just no everything's fine. Everything's fine, <laughs> you know. Like, which if like, if you're if you've ever if so you're is that lying to yourself, <laughs> without a doubt, yeah. It's <laughs> not just myself, but everyone else. But like, I think it's I'm not. Fine. I don't think it's lying to yourself. I think, I think it's telling yourself how you want to be. Mm. Wow, that's worth thinking about. Yeah, I, I, I'm not necessarily lying to myself. I'm telling myself what I want, want to be. To be yeah. like, this is what I want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you'll say I'm fine. And there's so many people that just like. Um, if, if you're a Christ follower, follower, like we said, we saw where Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Yeah. And you're like, well, <laughs> he said, don't worry about anything. So I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm great. Everything's good. Like, it, like I remember um, I've had, like I said, I've had panic attacks before and I literally find myself like rubbing my arms, like trying to, it's almost like a self soothing thing. Uh-huh. Like you're fine. Okay. You're okay. <laughs> Like you're gonna be, and it works. Okay. You're gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah and, and, it, and yeah, and it works. It helps me it get through. It snaps you out of that that gazelle moment. Yeah, but but that's the, that's one of the things that I think is so interesting that like God put that in the, like this animal yeah. to you have to complete this cycle. Cycle. You yeah. you have to allow yourself to understand, like we said before, that you are worried, mm. that you are anxious. Like that. Guess what? That is that is how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't do that. Like you never get out of that worry so, or anxious mode. So, so what I'm thinking about there is this: this idea of anxiety and worry comes over us, and we often go to, "Oh, that was an external circumstance that happened to me. I'm out of control." Mm. And when I feel out of control, that that's got the worry and anxiety, and and then I associate, "Oh, I don't have any control to get out of that." But in fact, we do. Yeah, we do. God designed us to have the control to be able to make the decision to say, "Uh huh." That circumstance situation was there, and now I'm going to respond. I have a choice on how I respond yeah. to every situation. Yeah, for sure. So, th- so beyond beyond unhealthy things that you can do to um, deal with anxiety, and then there's the the just the normal natural things like we talked about walking, um, exercise. I go to the gym every day, and I I, I um, I'm not joking when I say this. It's because a gym membership is uh, cheaper than like regular therapy <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's not it's nice to just yep. get to just get get that poison out right. you know um and so i like i think exercise is good walking um even um one thing that's like wildly popular right now is like the uh cold plunges yeah right and like the sauna like right. getting a sauna sweat, sweat it, it out. out or like i'm gonna jump into this ice bath you know and yep. i gotta be and which i i I love that. Like, mm-hmm. I think that that's wild to do. I've always enjoyed. Um, do, that's not true. I don't enjoy doing <laughs> it. I I do it, and I think it's cool afterward. <laughs> but um, that's something that's really popular for people right now. And yep. and I think all that is good. Um, but I don't think that that is the um, remedy that 
Jesus is getting at mm. to our anxiety. Like the, the question is, why do I worry? Mm-hmm. Like why am, am I anxious? Mm-hmm. Um, partly because um, I've experienced like pain. Mm. I've experienced pain. Broke, like, guess what? Like, I don't have a perfect life. Something happened. Yeah. Life is messy. We live in a broken world. Yeah, like, bad things have happened. Yep. Like, I, I have the news. Yep. <laughs> like, even though I don't watch the news on the regular, right. like, I get little updates from Twitter or yep. X, whatever it's called now. Yep. Like, I get little updates, and m- m- most of it's, like, local news, and most of the local news is, like... Something bad happened. Everything is burning down outside. It's like, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, and so I, I'm familiar with like bad things that happen. Yep. Um, I've experienced the bad things happen to me. That, that idea of what you're talking about, about control. Right. Like I realize more and more and more what I'm not in control, control. of. Yeah. Um, and that can freak me out. That, like, that sends us straight on that worry and anxiety spiral. Yeah, that, that's 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 the reason why. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm not I'm not in control of this. And and here's here's where I I, I also go is is then oh all these things that are happening are worse to me than anybody else, and I start playing this victim role, right? So yes. my anxiety and worry is justified because if anyone else knew how bad my my situation was you know they they'd worry and be anxious just like I am yeah. and, and in fact bad things happen to people all the time mm-hmm. this is this is like one of the truest things i've ever heard um, everyone believes that they are the exception yep like everyone i i believe that i'm the I exception <laughs> all the time you're like well i don't think i'm the i'm the exception to the exception, exception yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like everybody believes that they're the exception right like right. Uh, of um uh, everyone's life is great and perfect haven't you seen instagram mm-hmm. i'm the only one who this bad thing is happening to right or, or this bad thing has ever happened to and that just sends me worse on the spiral mm-hmm. of hey justifying my anxiety justifying my worry yeah and sitting in it yep like sitting parking in parking there mm-hmm. yeah which is like oh it's I, and again i like <laughs> i go oh because like i'm i've been there yeah where you feel so anxious or so worried about a situation where you're like, I just don't know what to do. Mm. I feel like I'm watching. I feel like I'm watching my life, and it's like watching a tr- train wreck, wreck in slow motion. Mm-hmm. I am frozen, and I don't know what to do because probably whatever I do is going to be the wrong thing to do, and I don't know. And then like I'm, I'm even just short of breath talking about that. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> that's how visceral of a reaction I get. Right. Like right. I, I understand anxiety and worry. I think all of us all of us do. Um, I think it's meaningless and and a pipe dream to pretend that you're just not anxious mm-hmm. to say, well, God said, don't be anxious. So I'm just not mm-hmm. like that. That's not that. That's not reality. The, yep. the reality is. You have worries. Yep. You have anxiety. It's the reason why Jesus addresses them. Um, but where does he get off saying, "Don't worry about, about anything. anything"? Like, and that, and that's, but that's where, if you're a Christ follower, if if you believe that Jesus is who He said He is, like this is where there's that intersection. Mm. Like this is where there's that um, collision between. Um, the story that I tell myself and the story that Jesus tells about me. T- yeah. Tells about me. Yeah. Like there, there's an intersection here. There's a collision here that I have to figure out like, which story am I going to believe? Yeah. Like, am I going to believe that I'm the only one that this happens to mm-hmm. that this will never get better? Like, do, do you use words like never, always, like every time, everything, anyone, like yep. all these um, no, I've never used those. Wild, <laughs> never. <laughs> I have all these wildly like um, never-ending terms, like. But that's how I talk to myself. That's that's what worry sounds like when yeah. I when I'm when I'm when I'm in that when yep. I'm sitting in anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it sounds like. Um, but in the passage that you're talking about in the Sermon on the Mount, um, he he says don't 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 worry about anything, anything. and he starts talking about like, well, is it the is it like what you are going to eat, eat or yeah. drink clothes? And he starts slowly pointing out yeah. like creation. Like, do you think birds worry about where their meal is going to come from? 
You're like, well, no. It's like, don't I love you more than birds? birds yeah. Like, l- look at the look at flowers. Mm. Like, do you see how beautiful like they're arranged? Like how they're the how they're clothed yeah. in beauty. Like, don't you think that you're more valuable than a flower? Right. Like, and and that that's the intersection. Yeah. Is okay. He cares about me more than birds and flowers. That's why I don't worry. Yeah. Like that, that, that's where I fight to get to mm. is I'm more valuable than birds and flowers. Right. He cares for me more than that yeah. because he said so. And, and where he gets off telling me not to worry about anything is that he made the birds and the flowers. flowers yeah. And he made me too. And he made me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, right. And and not just that, he displayed his love for me. Yeah. And he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Yep. Does not mean I'm never going to experience pain. Right. Does not mean I'm I'm never going to go through hardship or difficulty or financial ruin or, or, or whatever. It does not mean that. But it does mean that I am loved and cared for. Mm. Even when worry and anxiety says I'm alone and you're not loved and no one cares and you're just going to have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and pretend like everything's fine and get over it. Right. Like all, all, all these things that want to creep in to my mind and into my heart, like the, the, the remedy for all that, like where the, the, where the intersection is, is um, Jesus saying, like you're more valuable than birds, man. Birds, yeah. But like you're, you're more you're more precious to me than flowers. Like and look at them. Yep. Like look at them. And, and it's fighting to believe that instead of expending all my energy fighting to like um, try to how do I how do I how do I not feel anxious? Yeah. How, how do I how do I soothe myself? How do I do all these things? You can spend so much time and energy fighting for that. When, what does the pro- What does completing the process look like mm. for a Christ follower? For a Christ follower, like when you feel like there's a lion chasing you, there's a predator chasing you, whatever it is, and you narrowly escape, or maybe he, you know, bit off your back end. Yep. <laughs> like, you know, because sometimes took a, took a sometimes that happens too. Yeah. Like the the process is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go somewhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into a shaded spot. Yep. That's what a gazelle does. And and completing the process is reminding myself like um that I am loved, that I am cared for, that right. I am seen, yeah. that I am more valuable than these things like birds and flowers. The word, the word gratitude and thankfulness comes to mind. Oh, abso- absolutely. Yeah. Well, but when I'm so wrapped up in my worry, I don't I don't have any space for that. Yeah. Like I have to complete I have to complete the process. process. But completing the process is mm. like not just going and shaking yourself out like crazy in the shade somewhere. It's I want to go some I want to find a place where I can go and find um, remedy mm. and find healing and find peace because those are the things that I'm longing for when I feel anxious right. and when I feel worried. It's God, do you see me? Like, I need to go to a place where I'm reminded that I, I, I am seen. Mm. Like, I, I am loved. I am, I'm, I am adored. And so that does, again, that doesn't mean that I didn't just get my back end bit off. Right. Like, right? that doesn't mean that, oh, my, everything's roses and rainbows. Mm-hmm. Um, but it means that there's something more true than... Um, I'm in a bad and situation. The circumstantial situation yeah. that I mean, yeah. There's something more true than that. Bad, yeah. Like it doesn't mean that it's not true that you're in a bad situation or a bad circumstance, that you didn't experience pain. Yeah. There's just something more true right. than that. It makes me think about I was I was listening to this um uh, there was a podcast the other day by a neuroscientist and I, I love listening to that sort of stuff because I I I genuinely believe that science catches up with what the way God designed us. <laughs> And and absolutely, and, and we're just discovering as we go along. Mm-hmm. And this guy was talking about so Andrew Huberman. If you haven't looked, um, oh yeah, to him, he's like the him. most yeah. like Jack nerd ever. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. <laughs> but he was talking about this idea of um, kids that were doing drawings because they loved doing drawings, and then someone started to reward them with gold stars, mm-hmm. and then they stopped rewarding them with gold stars, 
and they stopped drawing because mm. they weren't getting rewarded anymore. And I think the point he was making is that we're, we're often so made ab- motivated by the reward mm. that the word you just mentioned is process. Mm-hmm. We forget the process of the, the joy of drawing or the yeah. joy of working out or the joy of going for a walk. And sometimes we – and I think that's where addictions come in because they're, because they're a goal – that give us a quick hit of dopamine. This neuroscience was saying they've, they've studied the chemicals going on mm-hmm. and this idea of dopamine coming from achieving a result sounds great, but he was saying the better result is to be able to produce dopamine during the process mm. so that you enjoy the process of working out of the pain. You enjoy yeah. the process of the conflict with your friend, spouse, whatever else. Yeah. You enjoy the process of fighting a health crisis that you might be going through as opposed to i will be happy when i get the result yeah because then that says i can't be happy i'm going to worry and be anxious until i get the result and his point was that that chemically can actually show that it's better to enjoy the process yeah and i thought that was really cool Uh, which is which is terribly like that's 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 a tall order it is you know when when i'm when what, what we're talking about i'm i'm in i'm battling for my health like, how can I possibly, how can I possibly enjoy battling for my health? Oh, when I'm in this terrible situation, how can I possibly yep. in, enjoy this? Or the pain I, of a workout yeah. or the pain of financial problems or the pain of a relationship breakup. How, how you can do that. And, and I'm not saying that I've personally experienced this, but I'm saying I've seen it mm. in people who have endured, like, terrible hardship yep. who have endured a terrifying diagnosis of the the way that you do that is um your perspective shifts mm. your perspective is different like instead of all of my focus and all of my attention and all of my heart being poured into this problem the people that i've encountered that are in what I would imagine the most stressful, anxious positions like or circumstances possible. The people that I've encountered that in that process will say things like, um, I, I wouldn't want God to take this away from me. Mm. Like this hardship and this pain, I, w- I wouldn't want that to be taken away from me. I would do this again. Mm. And you're like, ha. Why? Why? Yeah. How? It's because their perspective shifted from um, their their heart being so focused on their circumstance or their problem, shifted towards um, ultimately what Jesus says about them, them and what Jesus is saying to them. That's good. Like that focus, that that perspective. It's amazing how what you're talking about in the process there i'm not saying like you have to enjoy having cancer or you have to enjoy having i'm not saying that i'm saying in in the process they're enjoying the thing that's truer than the circumstance that they're facing the work that that god is doing in them and the fact that they're reminding themselves regularly of who he says they are yeah and that's one of those things like man I, i've i've been in ministry for like 17 years mm-hmm. I've, I've been a pastor for a second like i've i've known the lord for a minute I've, i have my own journey that i've been on i am i'm i'm not pretending to know like with certainty all the oh let me make you promises on xyz of how your life is going to be all i know is that like i've i've seen and encountered God working in people in ways that is purely like supernatural. Yeah. Like it's purely the only, the only answer, the only solution that I can give is like that. That's purely God working in that person. In, in the midst of deep pain, deep troubles, terrible worry, terrible anxiety, all those things. And so maybe you might find yourself being anxious over something small, being something over something little. Um, I I certainly find myself doing that a lot of times. The solution is still the same of 
okay, is there something truer than the, than the anxiety that I'm feeling? Like, yeah, it's, it's what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. Like, don't, don't be anxious for, don't worry about it. for anything. Yeah. Like, and ultimately, he finishes that, um, that phrase because it's, it's all these things that we're wanting. Like, oh, I want, I want food. I want shelter. What, what did we name? We named money and relationships and health. And health. Like, these are all the things that I want. Um, Jesus ends that portion in the Sermon on the Mount. Cool. That I understand that. If you seek first, like the the kingdom of God, like if you see, that's what I'm talking about. The thing that's truer than my circumstances and my anxiety. There you go. If I seek first the kingdom of God, and the and the and the one of the simplest explanations for that I've ever heard is like where where God is king. Like if I'm seeking God being the king and ruler in in me. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things, all these things will be be added, added to, you. to you. Yeah, like all those things that you're worried and you're stressed about. Like, it's it's pretty amazing how when I give my heart to the worry, or I give my heart to the stress, or the anxiety, and the, or the circumstance situation, how that just binds me up. Versus, I'm gonna allow God to rule in my heart. Mm. That's the thing that's truer that's than my so circumstance. Good. That's so good. All those things that I'm that I'm anxious and worried about, it's amazing how I can see them or, or spot them. The peace that I'm longing for, it's amazing how it's like, oh, well, it turns out um, it, it, I can find, it, like, I find peace here and I find peace there and I, in, these, in this relationship or these circumstances, even in the midst of my anxiety, my stress, my worry, my suffering, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and so that, that's the thing is to try to zero in on um, what's the truest thing. Yeah. Like, what, what's the truest thing? And I want to fight for that more than I want to fight to not feel the way that I'm feeling. Right. I want to try to escape. Fight for what is the truest thing, and I want to, I want to believe and I want to fight to know that. And, and the only true thing is what the creator of this universe says about me. Yeah. That's, that's really the truth. Yeah, that's good stuff. So I hope yeah. that's encouraging to you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, ho- I hope that m- maybe that that's something that you can that, that you can work towards. I'm I'm certainly after we said that super nice thing. Like I'm I'm certain I'm gonna be stressed and anxious <laughs> about something. Maybe even later today. Um, but I'm I want to try to fight for that. I want to try to remember um, that there's probably something truer than the anxious let's, um, thoughts. Let's work on this together. Yeah, there's one verse that that um, came that uh, just popped in my head. Um, it talks about um, I can't remember the address in scripture. Um, but it's this beautiful phrase where it says, uh, I think maybe it's in First John. It says, "God is greater than your worried heart." Mm. Like, that's what I want to fight for. Mm. That God is greater than my worried heart. That's good. And so, that's great. Yeah. yeah, I hope that encourages you guys. Yeah. Come hang out with us on Sundays at the Bear Levin Studer YMCA. That's where Wellspring meets for our Sunday gatherings. We'd love to see you there. Um, and if you're nervous or anxious about it, man, just come on. We'll, we'll give you coffee, give you a free gift, a T-shirt. We're nice people for the most part, but it'll be good. Love to see you guys. Take it easy. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.